Hello. In this lesson, I will continue part two of uh, congenital heart disease. Uh, in this uh, specific topic, uh, I will talk about a cyanotic heart disease. Uh, from this, we classify a cyanotic heart disease into a shunt lesion and obstructive lesion. Uh, it starts from shunt lesions. From shunt lesions, the first one is uh, atrial septal defect. Uh, atrial septal defect is due to failure of development of uh, embryonic atrial septal structure and it can occur in any portion of the atrial septum including uh, secundum primum and the sinus venosus uh, isolated secundum acd accounts for 7% uh, of uh, congenital heart disease so isolated secundum acd is the most common type of atrial septal defect and this uh, atrial septal defect can be sporadic or it can be familial and the female to male ratio is uh, 3 to uh, 1 so shunt lesions are more common on uh, females than males uh, when we see types of atrial septal defect there are four basic types of acd uh, ostium secundum defect ostium primum defect and the sinus venous defect and also coronary sinus septal defect uh, when we see the pathology uh, secundum acd is a defect that occurs in the area of fossa ovalis and it results from excessive fenestration or resolution of uh, septum primum and under development of septum secundum or a combination of the two and ostium primum defect is uh, due to the results from failure of endocardial uh, cushion to close the ostium primum because endocardial cushions also form the mitral and the tricuspid valve ostium primum defects virtually always are associated with a cleft in the anterior uh, mitral valve uh, this is the image of uh, types of the atrial septal defect and the third one is sinus venous defect and it is found in the posterior aspect of the septum near the uh, superior vena cava or the inferior vena cava associated with anomalous venous return and the coronary sinus septal defect is the least common type and uh, in this case a portion of the roof of the coronary sinus is missing a long shunting of blood from the left atrium into the coronary sinus and subsequently uh, into the right atrium uh, when we see pathophysiology uh, in atrial septal defect the degree of left to right shunt is dependent on uh, three factors those are the size of the defect the relative compliance of the right and the left ventricle the relative vascular resistance in the pulmonary and uh, systemic circulation as the right ventricle uh, becomes more compliant than the left ventricle the atrial level left to right shunt uh, increases and atrial septal defects are asymptomatic in early infancy uh, because of the increased compliance of the right ventricle and symptoms begin when pulmonary vascular resistance decreases and patients with small acd are asymptomatic and the most defects causing murmurs or symptoms are moderately large to large in size with left to right shunting and despite the large pulmonary blood flow pulmonary arterial pressure is usually normal uh, this is because of the absence of the high pressure communication between the pulmonary and the systemic circulation patients could ultimately develop a menger syndrome during adolescence or adulthood uh, when we see the clinical manifestation of atrial septal defect this usually uh, is incidental finding because most patients are asymptomatic and uh, some septal failure to thrive and exercise intolerance uh, is uh, known and also on physical finding fixed splitting of s2 and ejection systolic murmur at mid to upper left sternal border caused by a turbulence flow as the right ventricular outflow tract and not uh, because of the shunt so the murmur is not due to the shunt it is due to a turbulence flow at uh, the right ventricular outflow tract and diastolic murmur of uh, tricuspid valve can be heard also uh, when we see the diagnosis uh, chest x-ray is important this shows non specific but uh, it include right atrial and right ventricular dilation and the pulmonary artery dilation also and increase the pulmonary vascular marking and on ecg uh, right axis deviation right ventricular hypertrophy and the prolonged pr interval can be seen and on echocardiography the size, size of the shunt and the associated congenital cardiac lesion uh, can be uh, seen. Uh, when we see the treatment of atrial septal defect, if the patient is in a failure, heart failure, diuretic, digoxin, and afterload reduction can be helpful. And the, the definitive treatment is surgical or catheter closure of the defect. And the indication to close uh, surgical is when the ratio of pulmonary to systemic blood flow ratio is greater than 2 to 1 or 
if the patient is symptomatic from the uh, shunt. Uh, when we see the prognosis, spontaneous closure is seen in around 50% of second MACD and pulmonary hypertension, atrial dysarrhythmia, and tricuspid or mitral insufficiency, and heart failure uh, can be uh, seen and also uh, infective endocarditis is extremely rare, but it can be, uh, it can happen. Uh, the second types of shunt lesion is ventricular septal defect. Uh, when we see the anatomy of ventricular septal defect, uh, it is due to inadequate development of any of the component parts of the ventricular septum, uh, the muscular portion of the interventricular septum, the endocardial cushion or the conotranchial ridge. And communication between the two ventricles can happen at the side. And VSD is the most common cardiac malformation and it accounts for around 30% of congenital heart disease. And the defects may occur in any portion of the ventricular septum, but most are of the membranous type. And supracrystal VSD are found just beneath the pulmonary valve and it may impinge on aortic sinus and cause aortic uh, insufficiency. Uh, when we see types of VSD, uh, membranous, muscular, supracrystal, and atroventricular canal defects are the types of VSD. So there are four types of uh, VSD. And when we see the pathophysiology, the determinants of the left to right shunt in VSD is the size of the VSD. This is the major determinant, and the other is pulmonary vascular resistance uh, level. And we call restricted VSD if the size is less than 0.5 cm square, and we call uh, non restrictive or large VSD if the size is greater than uh, 1 cm square. And right and left ventricular pressure is equalized in the case of. An unrestrictive or large VCD and the direction and the magnitude of the shunt are determined by the ratio of pulmonary to systemic blood flow. Uh, as pulmonary vascular distance continues to fall in the first few weeks after birth, because of the normal involution of the media of the small pulmonary arteries, the size of the left to right shunt increases. And eventually, a large left to right shunt develops and the clinical symptom become apparent. And we, with continued exposure of the pulmonary vascular bed to high systolic pressure and high flow, pulmonary vascular obstructive disease develops. And when the ratio of pulmonary systemic re, uh, resistance approaches one to one, the shunt becomes bidirectional, and then later the signs of heart failure abates and the patient becomes cyanotic. So, is a menger physiology develops. Uh, when we see the clinical feature of uh, VSCD, small VSCD are asymptomatic. And large VSD can cause dyspnea, feeding difficulty, poor growth, uh, profuse perspiration, recurrent pulmonary infection, and cardiac failure uh, in early infancy. And on physical finding, precordial bulge, holostolic murmur, diastolic murmur at tapex, uh, due to increased flow, and accentuated P2 can happen if there is pulmonary hypertension. Uh, to diagnose VSD, uh, you can use chest X ray, can be used, and it shows cardiomegaly and prom prominent bronchovascular marking and the large pulmonary artery. And on ECG, you can see biventricular hypertrophy and the peaked or notched PUF. And echocardiography can uh, tell us the site and the size of the defect and also associated cardiac lesion. Uh, when we see the natural history of VSD, spontaneous closure can occur during the first four years of life. And Closure may occur by either hypertrophy of the septum, formation of fibrous tissue, subaortic tracts, opposition of the septal leaflet to transcuspid valve, and rarely by prolapse of leaflet of the aortic valve. And the closure is most frequently observed in the muscular defect, whereas uh, the most common type of VSD is a membranous type. This is followed by premembranous defect, which is uh, which can occur in 35 to 40 percent. And outlet VSD have a low incidence of spontaneous closure, and inlet VSD do not close at all. Uh, when we see complication of VSD, heart failure, uh, pulmonary hypertension, Isenmenger physiology, aortic regurgitation from supracrystal VSD, and acquired infundibular pulmonary stenosis and infective endocarditis really up. Uh, regarding treatment, for those who had large VSD with heart failure, uh, diuretics, after loading, uh, reducing agent. Uh, good oral and dental agent to prevent uh, the risk of infective endocarditis and also uh, for uh, definitive treatment, uh, palliative pulmonary artery binding or uh, closure of the VSD should be done. Uh, when we see some indication for surgery in VSD, CHF and the failure to thrive which is uncontrolled medically and infants from 6 to 12 months of age with large defect with pulmonary hypertension uh, 
and the patient is older than 24 months with pulmonary system blood flow ratio greater than 2 to 1 and supra crystal VACD respective of sizes are indication to close uh, VACD. And the third one is atroventricular septal defect or endocardial cushion defect. And in this case, uh, normally the tricuspid valve sits slightly lower, uh, more towards the cardiac apex than uh, the ventral valve, and this a small portion of septum separates the left ventricle from the uh, right atrium. Uh, this is the atroventricular septum that is deficient in all forms of atroventricular septal defect. And in most cases, a cleft in the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is also noted. And an atroventricular septal defect, formerly known as AV canal defect or endocardial cushion defect, consists of a defect of the AV septum and a contagious atrial ventricular septal defect with a common AV valve. And the severity of the AV valve abnormality varies uh, considerably. And in the complete form of AV septal defect, a single AV valve is common to both ventricles and consists of anterior and posterior bridging leaflet related to the ventricular septum with a lateral leaflet in each ventricle. And the anterior bridging leaflet can be divided into right and left uh, sided components or it might be single or free floating over the ventricular septum. And complete AV septal defect is common in children with Down syndrome. Uh, Transitional variants of this defect is also occur and includes ostium prime defect with cleftis in the anterior mitral and uh, septal tricuspid valve leaflets and a small VCD and less commonly ostium prime defect with normal AV valves. And in some patients, the trial septum is intact, but a VCD is seen in the inlet septum, similar to the, uh, that found in the complete form of AV septal defect. And sometimes AV septal defects are associated with varying degrees of hypoplasia of one of the ventricles, known as either left dominant or right dominant AV septal defect. Uh, when we see the clinical manifestation of uh, AV septal defect, uh, exercise intolerance, uh, feeding intolerance, failure to thrive, uh, easy fatigability, and also on physical examination, recurrent pneumonia, liver uh, enlargement, cardiac enlargement is moderate to market, and the precordium is hyperdynamic. Uh, uh, when we see auscultatory finding, normal or accentuated first third sound, wide and fixed splitting of SC2 due to pulmonary hypertension and the pulmonic systolic ejection murmur uh, preceded by a click and also low pitched mid diastolic rumbling murmur at the lower left sternal edge or apex or both as a result of increased flow through the valves and mitral insufficiency might be manifested by harsh apical or systolic murmur that radius to the left axilla can be heard. And on diagnosis, on chest X-ray, we can see uh, on complete AV septal defect, it might show moderate to severe cardiac enlargement caused by prominence of both ventricles and atria, and the pulmonary artery is large and the pulmonary vascularity is increased. And the important uh, imaging is echocardiography. This is uh, an encroachment of the mitral valve into the left ventricle outflow tract, and abnormal low position of the AV valve results in a goose neck deformity of uh, the left ventricular outflow tract. And the Doppler echo will demonstrate left to right chanting at the atrial ventricular or uh, left ventricular right atrial uh, levels. And it can be used to semi quantize the degree of AV valve regurgitation. And it is useful for determining the insertion point of the cordae of the common AV valve and for evaluating the presence of uh, associated lesions. Uh, regarding treatment of atrioventricular septal defect, uh, management of heart failure with dialectic till surgical closure. And because of the risk of pulmonary vascular disease uh, developing as early as uh, 6 to 12 months of age, uh, surgical intervention must be performed during infancy for all patients with AVS. Uh, regarding prognosis, uh, the prognosis for unrepaired complete AV septal defects depends on the magnitude of the left to right shunt and the degree of uh, pulmonary vascular resistance elevation and the severity of AV valve insufficiency. Uh, patients who survived without surgery usually developed pulmonary vascular obstructive disease. And the most patients with ostium primum defects and the minimal AV valve involvement are asymptomatic or have only minor non-progressive symptoms until they reach the third or uh, fourth decade of life, similar to those course of patients with second MACD. Uh, from the shunt lesions, the fourth one is patent ductus arteriosus. Uh, ductus arteriosus in fetal life provides systemic circulation to the lower part of the body, and functional closure occurs immediately after birth. And uh, anatomic closure occurs 90% uh, complete at two months and 99% at one year. And the closure is mainly by increased oxygenation.
and when the persistence beyond the expected time after birth it is called pda uh, when we see epidemiology pda is the persistence of normal fetal vessel that joins the pulmonary artery to the aorta and it accounts for 10 percent of all cases of uh, chd and it is twice as common in females as in males and it is common in preterm infants and it might reach up to 20 uh, when we see the pathology of PDA, PDA and preterm infant is caused by hypoxia and the prematurity. Otherwise, the wall is normal. Whereas PDA and term infant is due to deficiency of both endothelial and the muscular layer. And congenital rubella syndrome causes cytopathic damage to ductus arteriosus and that results in uh, PDA. Uh, PDA provides pulmonary blood flow when the right ventricular outflow tract is stenotic or atretic and it provides systemic blood flow in the presence of aortic coarctation or uh, interruption. And the shunt direction and the magnitude through PDA depends on the size of the defect and the relationship between pulmonary and uh, vascular resistance in the systemic region. Uh, PDA shunts blood from the aorta to the pulmonary artery until uh, as a menger physiology develops. And a small PDA of uh, no significant shunt, whereas large PDA can shunt up to 75% of cardiac output and it can cause pulmonary vascular resistance early. Uh, when we see the clinical feature of PDA, small PDA are asymptomatic, and the large PDA results in CHF and the gross failure. And on physical finding, uh, bounding pulse and the weight pulse pressure, active precordium, shifted apical impulse, historic three at the left second interspace, uh, continuous machinery murmur, and the murmur become predominantly systolic if a pulmonary hypertension uh, develops. Uh, regarding the diagnosis, uh, on chest X-ray in large PDA, significant cardiomegaly with prominence of pulmonary artery and increased bronchovascular marking can be seen. And echocardiography uh, can tell us the size of the defect, associated cardiac anomaly, and the development of pulmonary hypertension or Zemminger syndrome. Uh, when we see the complications of PDA, PDA can cause CHF, it can cause failure to thrive, infective endocarditis, pulmonary hypertension, and uh, it can cause Isimenger syndrome with a right to left shunt. Uh, regarding management, uh, medical management is to treat heart failure from PDA, and otherwise surgical or catheter closure is needed irrespective of the size of the defect uh, to avoid the risk of endarteritis. Uh, thank you for your attention, and on the next uh, or on the part three of this lesson, we'll talk about obstructive lesion and the cyanotic heart disease.